So let me ask you, what are you doing to get ready for Christmas? Many people are busy preparing for this wonderful holiday season. They're hanging up all the fake wreaths they can find, and those flocked pink Christmas trees are going up everywhere, and then those tinfoil ones that are silver with uh, rotating colored lights all over them, people are getting ready for Christmas. Well, you'd also know it's Christmas, and the season is bright and cheery when all those inflated and sometimes deflated, blown up Santa Clauses, Christmas bears... Now, reindeer, all those lawn ornaments start going out and filling up everybody's yards. We know it's Christmas and people are getting ready when Starbucks starts spicing the lattes. Now we know it's Christmas. And, of course, we're getting ready for Christmas as the rising tensions come within us. In our spirit of wanting to do and give and share and love, well, we push and shove and grab for the gift that we want to give so badly to someone who's only going to return it the day after Christmas. Isn't that sometimes the case? We're getting ready for Christmas in all different ways. A young man said to me, you know, I do most of my Christmas shopping online. But one of the things I like to do is I hire someone to honk and scream obscenities at me while I'm doing that so I get the whole holiday experience. (laughs) What are you doing to get ready for Christmas? You see, I'm asking you to think beyond just all the baking and all the gift wrapping and all of the decorating and sometimes the Xanax taking. I'm asking you to think beyond all of that. What are you getting ready to do to prepare yourself for this beautiful season of Christmas? Can I suggest that getting ready for Christmas is really getting ready for a celebration of a new birth within your life? For the scripture is there to tell our story, and you are in the Christmas story. No, you are not the wise men, although there is great wisdom. No, you're not the shepherds, although you may be guiding. You are all of, I'm not just those things, you are all of those things, is what I want to say. Not just those things, but all, in every aspect, it's your story. It's a story of a new birth, a birth of Christ consciousness, Christ awareness, That's why we celebrate it every year. It's awareness of something new being born in. Awareness of humanity awakening to this wonderful light. You know, every time you look at that nativity scene and you see that beautiful baby Jesus in the manger, it should call you to something deep within your life that's a greater awakening, that's calling you to say, Christmas is a time of awakening to the light the light of wisdom, the light of love, the light of grace, the light of mercy, all this infinite light. It's a calling to awakening to that within my heart and our life and to move then to a higher level of understanding. Someone said, I think it's great. We should get high at Christmas. I think so too. Getting high, moving higher in consciousness, getting high in this wonderful awareness of the wonderful light that is there for our lives. Sometimes we lose sight of that as we get caught up in all the trappings of Christmas and all the traditions around us and say, what really is Christmas? It is the birth of the light, the light coming into our lives, the light of illumination, the light of understanding, a light of greater consciousness that takes us higher and higher in spiritual awareness. Do you ever wonder why we celebrate Christmas on December 25th? Do you ever wonder why? Now, Scripture says in the very gospel story telling of Mary, it was in the sixth month that the angel came to her. That's June. Okay. So if she was informed of her pregnancy in June, her birth uh, experience would more likely be somewhere around March the 5th. Hmm, who else has a birthday on March the 5th? Oh, me. Oh, somewhere around there. Yes. Uh, So we think someone has said it could be that the actual birthday of Jesus would have been more likely somewhere within March or April. I'd like to think March the 5th that Jesus and I, you know, we celebrate the very same day. Uh, You know, it's all in looking at when we see this, we ask ourselves, why then the 25th? You know, as Christianity moved, there was a deeper meaning that needed to be expressed as there was a merger of religions and outlooks coming together in time. Do you know what happens around December the 25th? Well, the 21st is the winter solstice. It's the darkest day of the year. 
Now, you've been seeing this as you're traveling home and saying, what happened? At 5 o'clock, I used to travel home in traffic that was all lit up and it was light and I could find my way. Now I'm using headlights and bright lights and I'm all concerned about driving in the dark at 5 o'clock. You see, the sun has been slowly slipping away. And we've seen this in all around us. We see all of nature slipping away from us. A time of fall, a season change, a time of growing into the darkness. And then the winter solstice. It's the time when things begin to make a big turnaround. Darkness is now transformed into light. As the winter solstice happens, the darkest day begins, it now turns into the beginning of a new light a new sun, a new rotation coming for us, bringing light to the world and overcoming that darkness. It's the season then speaking to us in great volumes. So Christmas is celebrated at this time of the year because it's to speak great volumes to our hearts and our lives. Of that which has been the darkness now is transformed into the journey of the unfolding of light in our life. Light. Understanding, understanding of love and grace and truth. How beautiful it is as we see that from this point forward, the days grow longer and there'll be more light. There will be more new growth and there will be the sense of living out the abundant life coming in a fresh new way. Just as Christmas speaks to us of this wonderful journey of a, a transformation from the darkness to this wonderful journey of new light, new growth within your spiritual life. So when we look at that wonderful nativity scene, it symbolizes for us, I'm going through some changes. Spiritually, I'm moving higher and higher. Spiritually, I'm setting new aspirations. I'm welcoming more and more of the light of spiritual growth within my heart and my life. From this point forward, as the days grow longer, you're celebrating then that experience of more and more light within your life and that wonderful beauty of an abundance. For this Christmas message is all about getting ready to celebrate the light, this light of love and wisdom, two aspects of our spiritual life. The light of love, well, that's that wonderful feeling. We know this to be our truth, that when we celebrate any consciousness with great feeling, feeling an emotion coming, we begin to ignite a creative energy within our hearts and our lives. When you're experiencing love, the feeling of great love, God is love. When you're experiencing this great emotion, it's transformational within your life. Then you ask you, or add all to it the light of wisdom, the light of light, meaning the wisdom in our life, this intellectual knowing that's there. And together we put these two aspects of light and love together, of knowing intellect and wisdom with the wonderful sense of feeling. We have this creative power that works within our lives. Celebrating Christmas is celebrating this light and love coming in fresh new ways to our lives that ignites something powerful within us that begins to unfold a whole new year to begin. I'd like to say many that New Year's really begins at Christmas. Don't wait till New Year's Eve. Don't wait till January the 1st. It's that new year in your spiritual life begins at this moment that something new has been born within my life. It's new and fresh. It's a new awareness of going higher and higher in this presence. We're moving then in Christmas to a new spiritual plane in life, moving and awakening to a greater understanding that's higher. So we look then to the scriptures to explain to us how do we get ready for this great experience, this spiritual awakening within our lives. Well, we look today's text as we find ourselves in every Bible story you too can be as the shepherds, keeping watch over your flock at night. What is this great spiritual symbolism all about? Well, we know as we've looked through scripture after scripture that the metaphor of the sheep is that of our conscious or our thought life. How many have heard that scripture? All we like sheep have gone astray. How many times have your thoughts gone astray? How many times? Right now, your thoughts are going astray. Okay, I see some hands going up. I want to bring you back into it as the shepherd saying, let us now bring those thoughts into the fold. Let us bring our thoughts into this moment, into this now. So we like shepherds are watching over our thoughts at night. Night, symbolic in that metaphor of this times of ignorance of being in the darkness, of not experiencing the light of wisdom. 
So we then are called to be shepherds, tending our sheep, our thoughts, at, in moments of great ignorance or darkness, when, we don't be, when we're not able to really see with great clarity, but they're tending to our thoughts at all times. We should watch our thoughts to protect them against sort of the invasion of the senses of this world around us that want to invade us constantly with an energy of negativity and a doubt and fear and questioning. You know, sometimes it's so easy this time of the year when the sun is absent and it's just darkness. You get a little sleepy and a little moody, sun deprived, and you get, feel like, oh, thoughts of depression enter into our hearts and our lives. This is why we're called to be shepherds of those thoughts, watching over them, protecting them and guiding them, lest they uh, give in to this world of appearances around us. Appearances that would say, this is your reality, when you know within there is a different reality. This is your reality, is the world of appearances wanting to say to you, oh, it's a world of of uh, challenge. It's a world of difficulty. It's a world of trial and tribulation. It's a world of all kinds of hassles and difficult times. And that may be the appearances. But do we not know that the goodness of God is always present? We say it over and again. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. So we don't entertain the thoughts of the appearances around us. Instead, we guard our thoughts to say we know the truth within us, that goodness is with us even in the moments of darkness, even in the moments where it seemed like we don't quite see with great clarity. We still monitor those thoughts, guard those thoughts, shepherd those thoughts from going on astray. Because one of the challenges in our world and one of the great excuses that's used over and over again is I'm distracted, you know? How many husbands have said, oh, I forgot the anniversary. Oh, I was distracted, honey. How many people said in a traffic accident to the officer? Oh, I didn't see, I was distracted. How many times have you used that when you didn't turn your homework in at school? I was distracted by something. You see over and over again, life has said you've been distracted. How important it is as we get ready for Christmas that we're not distracted by the things around us that can rob us, take us away from the highest and best in this experience. We find here that the angel's message to those shepherds was don't be afraid. One of the great things I find in working in over 41 years of pastoral ministry as an ordained pastor is that people are actually afraid of their spiritual life. Sounds kind of strange. But I find that a lot of people are afraid. They're afraid of this wonderful insight, wisdom, knowledge that's being offered to them and say, wait a minute, I don't know if I can take this all in. I don't know if I can believe it. I don't know if I can really trust the miraculous. I don't know if I can really believe all these things that are offered. They sound so too good to be true. And I'm actually afraid of it. I'm afraid to really venture down that road. I often think about the story of Peter stepping out of the boat and wondered, why were there not other disciples stepping out of the boat? Were they afraid too to take that step of faith to say, I will walk on those waters. I will get out of the boat. I will do that which is seemingly and in the world around us of appearances looking to be impossible. You see, many within our spiritual lives would say, we too are, I'm just scared to step out in faith. I'm scared to really believe and trust. I'm scared to really profess or declare that which I really want to claim in the realm of God. That I really want to believe for the highest and best, but, you know, it's risky to step out there because, well, it requires great faith. And so the angel is saying, don't be afraid. To prepare ourselves for this spiritual experience called Christmas to get ready for it is to abandon all fear and to step out and begin to walk in this holy boldness that says, I know that I know and I'm assured that as I walk by faith, great things are there for me and they're unfolding my highest and best. You see, many of us are afraid of our spiritual lives because it's a calling for us to be responsible for our life, to accept responsibility. Too often, we sing these songs like, Jesus, take the wheel. And I got afraid to say, I'm afraid to tell you that Jesus is saying, no, I taught you, you take the wheel. You know, uh, you see, quite often we like to find a religion that says, someone else will do this for me. 
It's someone else's fault. It's someone else's issue. It's someone else's responsibility. Where in true spirituality, it's a personal experience that says it begins with me taking responsibility for my spiritual life. In religion, we find that there are uh, organized means in which people relate to the sacred and the divine. It's organized by humanity that's created pathways, rituals, dogmas of religion. Where spirituality is really something that occurs within our own lives, that's your story, your private experience, your personal experience. It's what's going on within you. And that can be kind of scary. Oh, let me just rely on some sort of doctrine or creed. Let me rely on the minister or the church. Let me rely on someone else to do it all for me. You know, as a child, you know, my parents believed that one day Jesus was coming and uh, they were going to be raptured and taken away. And there's a little kid, I would think, wait, wait a minute, uh, I was bad today and I had some thoughts that weren't the best. And oh dear, my parents aren't home. Did Jesus come and I was left behind? Oh, the best thing was I had Mrs. Bridge on speed dial. I would call, uh, ring the phone, and if Mrs. Bridge, the saint of God of the church, if she answered and said hello, I'd like hang up and go, okay, I know I'm still good. You know, I relied on someone else. I relied on someone else's spirituality for all of that understanding of the unfolding of the goodness of God instead of making it private, personal, intimate, and taking responsibility for my own individual life. I'm so grateful for the moment when I said, I realize that if there's going to be a transformation, it begins within me, and I have to make this choice. You can't make it for me. Someone else can't make it for me. Someone else can't do it for me. I have to say, I am not afraid to proclaim I'm the child of God. I'm not afraid to take responsibility for my spiritual life. I'm not afraid of this wonderful journey because I know it's only going to bring about my highest and best. One of the great hymns of the church. You may know it, and you may have heard it. You may have actually danced to it. It's Madonna's song, and you know we're living in a material world, and I am a material girl. Okay, how many of you can reflect on the 80s? You danced to it, you remember it. The great hymn of the church is, and we know we are living in a spiritual world, and I am a spiritual girl, man, whatever, fill in the blank, okay? So it is. A great hymn of the church might be that I'm living in a spiritual world. Transform the whole consciousness of our thinking at Christmas that is a born-again new experience that says, I now see that I'm living this way. I'm living because the light is shining in the darkness of this ignorance that I had. I thought I was living in a material world. I thought everything about me was this physical manifestation. I thought everything was this limitation of this world of materialism around me. And then I had a Christmas moment. I had this wonderful experience. The light has been birthed within my life. The transformation to darkness and light is experiencing alive within me. And now I see I'm living in a spiritual world. And I am a spiritual man girl, whatever you want to fill in the blank with as you sing that great hymn of the church. You see, it's understanding that we can live from a spiritual realm that changes and transforms everything within our journey. Not being afraid to then be that one who sees the light, awakens to the light, goes to embrace the light, that light of love and great wisdom. Now, how many of you have got this good china, good linen, good stuff, you know, that you've saved in your china closet, you put away, you know, you wait for some special occasion to use it. Uh, my mother passed away, and we opened up her cedar chest. It was the cedar chest that she had uh, that was her dowry. You know, in the olden days, the girls would always start preparing for their wedding day and uh, building up their dowry of things that they'd put in their beautiful cedar chest for their home that they would create. On their, my mother's wedding day, she received a beautiful yellow woolen blanket 70 years ago. And it was remained in the cedar closet or in the cedar chest. Why? She said, it's a special blanket. We're going to use it for a special occasion. When is that special occasion? Today is the special occasion. 
And here it is. So many of us are the same way about our spiritual life and our faith. We're afraid to use it and express it and to live it out because, oh, I'm saving my faith for a special occasion. I'm saving. It's wrapped up. It's special. And one of these days, we're going to use it. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get it out. We'll, you know, one of these days, I'll really, we're going to believe and pray. One of these days, we're really going to walk in faith. We'll do that on a special occasion. But today, it's just an everyday day. It's just a normal day. But you see, the call is to not wait for those special occasions. Break out the good stuff. Break out the faith. Break out the love. Break out the grace and mercy and begin to use it every single day of your life. Don't be afraid to put it into action. Don't be afraid to step out in faith and believe at every moment, whatever it may be in the journey of your life. Begin to express it. Use it. I want you to know that yellow blanket is being used right now at my home. I know, I know. That 70-year-old blanket with all of its mothball odors, yes, it's out there on one of our guest beds. It's there to be used, to be celebrated, because it was intended that this is the special day that we waited for. So it is that we understand this text of the story of the shepherds saying we need to go to Bethlehem. We need to go and see this thing. We need to go to this place. And what is this place? What is this place called Bethlehem? Well, we look at the ancient analogies and symbolism and the metaphor of this word Bethlehem. It means house of bread. It is there that you will find the house of bread. Now, we're not just talking about loaves of wheat bread, white bread, wonder bread. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about bread where Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am offering you the bread that sustains you, meaning a symbol of that which nurtures and sustains us. And what sustains us in life? Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. That's what sustains us in the journey of life. So the shepherds were invited. Come to the house of bread. Come to the house of a new understanding. Come to this place called Bethlehem. Travel there and go and see and when we're willing to make this journey to our own personal Bethlehem, to our own personal house of bread, to our own personal place of this awakening experience, that's when Christmas comes alive for us because we experience the bread of understanding. Where is this house? Well, it's a beautiful analogy for that which is within. And going within in our individual lives, going within is there that we find the unfolding of the light of love and wisdom for our lives. True understanding will unfold for you. Not when you search high, when you search low, when you go here, when you run there. It unfolds within you in the house of great understanding, that inner space, that quiet place within you where we embrace that be still and know that I am God. Last week, Lee, we find how to prepare for Christmas is that the shepherds said, let us go in haste. Let us respond right now. You know, they could have said, yeah, you know, it's nighttime. It's kind of late, a little late to be traveling to go into Bethlehem. You know, why don't we just wait till morning? You know, maybe next week sounds great. We've got things on our agenda. We've got things to do. Why should we rush now? You know, there's no hurry, whatever. You know, you see, that can be also the words that want to come into our thought life. And is there a haste? Is there a reason, a hurry for me in the journey of my spiritual life that I really need to respond today? How about tomorrow? How about another time? Do I really need to step out in faith? And do I need to really manifest great things? Do I need to profess for the goodness of God? Do I need to call out for my healing? Do I need to claim these things now? Uh, how about I wait till another time? Is it important that I do it in haste? Haste meaning to do without hesitation. These great moments in life await you. It's our hesitation that's keeping us from our highest and best. It's not a someday, it's a today life that we're called to live. Because quite often we think, well, someday the goodness of God will unfold for me. Someday I will get blessed. Someday I will receive my prosperity. Someday I'll get my healing. Someday something good will unfold for me. We all think it's someday, don't we? And we live from that consciousness. 
But let me invite you. The story of Christmas calls us to be experiencing it here and now with no hesitation. That we're people of today. That this new birth of experience of light and love and understanding is waiting for us. Don't haste. Receive it now. Don't waste the, another moment. Move in this. Uh, don't waste any time, but move in this wonderful energy of saying, I will not hesitate. I'll move forward in this. I'll receive my highest and best. I want to tell you this. Today is a day of blessing. But sometimes we hesitate and hold back. Every day is a day of the unfolding of God's goodness. You don't need to wait for the someday or some special occasion. Make haste today. Move quickly. Move without hesitation. And welcome this divine experience unfolding for you. So let's talk about how we're getting ready for Christmas. First, we're going to watch our thoughts. Guard and protect them from any kind of disruption, attraction to be appealing to the limitation of the appearances of our world, to be appealed to that, to be desiring of that and saying that's how we may live our life. We're going to watch like shepherds tending our flocks at night. We're going to learn that we don't need to be afraid of the light and love around us. We don't need to walk in fear of it, but to embrace it to its fullest. We need to learn that it's our day today to travel to our Bethlehem, to that house of bread of new understanding, to receive there the truth, the awakening for our spiritual life that awaits us, for it's here and now. So let us move. Let us move quickly without hesitation. That's how we get ready for Christmas. Amen.